It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So this is part three of the keyboard and microphone series. And as you'd see by the title of today's video, I'm going to be having a look at the Rode NT1. Now this microphone has been with me right from the beginning of my podcast and YouTubing days. It was the primary microphone that I chose to do my recordings with because it gave a really great sound from all the reviews that I read and it represented well. It isn't the same as a ribbon microphone, it's a condenser microphone, because supposedly it adds more warmth to the sounds that it picks up. So in terms of how that represents keyboards though, we would expect there to be some differences because if it's actually adding tones that we wouldn't necessarily be picking up or hearing, then you know it's it's not going to be as our ears experience it. Let's have a look at the frequency response as we did with the NTR, which here is the NT1 frequency response. We can see on the low end frequencies that we don't normally hear but we physically may feel. It isn't as good as picking that up and then it's very flat right across that mid-range and then towards the high range it actually makes it easier, it boosts those frequencies before it tails off towards that super high frequency range. Now what's really interesting is from the NT1, sorry from the NTR that we did before we didn't really see anything past the 5000 mark. So if we consider that's 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, the 5000 mark it's just starting to actually add signal to what's passing in. So realistically speaking this microphone actually may be better at a flat response on capturing what a keyboard sounds like but it might not mimic how our ears would experience it because the ribbon microphone changing and and having that up and down that we saw in the pattern before may actually be more representative in the way that our ear membranes react to those frequencies. I don't know, but that's just something to think about. I'm not a specialist in this context, but that's the way that I'm interpreting why people talk about ribbon microphones being more representative of our hearing versus pure sound capture, where the condenser seems to do a very good job because it's flat all the way across. Now, I do want to bring up that my setup is a little bit different this time, and there's a reason for it because I've now got a plank of wood that's holding up the microphone and uh, I have had to, for better or worse, uh, there is my filing cabinet next to it with the plank. There's a whole bunch of boxes and weights so it holds it up. The plank is actually suspending the microphone over the keyboard on a stand. The thing is, when I recorded the first video with the ribbon microphone with the NTR, the height was about 20 centimeters off the keyboard. The height of the stand that I have that I'm using for the other microphones is actually taller than that. In fact, it's closer to 26 centimeters to the capsule with this plank setup. Now, the reason why I've done with this plank setup is because I'm trying to isolate the microphone and the stand from the table, which is why it's all hanging off the filing cabinet here to the side. Now, for evenness and fairness, it means I'm going to go back and redo the ribbon microphone at that height because it's on my uh, shock mounted arm stand and I can do that. I'm not going to film that, but I will do that. So when you look at the sound sample and when you look at the graph later on, it's going to be potentially different to what was in the part two video because it will have the new adjusted height at sitting around the 26 centimeters. So I've taken the ruler and I've measured it against that point and it's sitting at 26. The other microphones will be mounted on the same type of stand because I ended up buying a number of them, originally thinking on how I was going to do this, but I found that even typing with these stands, quite heavy as they are, on the desk, vibrations were actually traveling through and I didn't want that. So having this jury rig solves that problem. Now, you're actually hearing me right now on the ribbon microphone, but with my mixer on the side, 
I've got it set up with the same gain and level for the NT1. Now, I'm going to turn on the, the top down, but that will capture where that positioning is. And the angle of the camera doesn't look like it's over the top of the, uh, the keyboard, but it is actually directly over the top of the keyboard where that position is. It's just that the effect of the camera angle doesn't show that. So I'm now going to dial down on the NTR, which is what you're hearing me talk into, and I'm going to dial up on the NT1, and then you'll kind of hear that. So, you know, right now, changing over the different microphone input, and I think that you're still hearing it, but what you're hearing now is purely coming out of the NT1 at a flat angle. So it will sound slightly different because the condenser tube, the, the actual condenser is capturing it at a different polar pattern to its intended. So let's get cracking with the 10 seconds of background and then we'll go into 60 seconds on monkey type. Okay, so a little bit better, 91 words per minute, 96% accuracy. It's pretty much around where I said I was before, around the 80 to 90 mark. Uh, now I'm going to just switch over back to the normal microphone. Now there was some idiot with some weird horn that was... Uh, going by while I did that. Hopefully it won't skew the results too much. I could hear it. I don't know if the microphone was picking it up versus the actual sounds coming out of the keyboard. So we're going to treat the track just like we did before. It was about eight seconds when I stopped clicking around. So we're going to take it to, uh, well, all right. So I started at 18. Maybe we'll just take it back to seven seconds for 10 seconds of noise reduction. We're going to grab it there. Get the nose profile, noise, nose. <laughs> English is uh, hard to enunciate, despite the fact that I've spoken it pretty much the majority of my life. <laughs> and then we're going to amplify that, bring it to a baseline of zero. Now, sensitivity-wise, what I find really interesting in having this height, and it is a different microphone, is that on the NTR, the amplification value, I think, was around 15 or 16. So having an amplification of 13 for this means this is actually more... Uh, well, I won't say sensitive, but it amplifies the signal probably more as part of its pickup. Uh, because you'll notice that, if you remember from the NTR, the frequency response goes into the negative decibel straight away, whereas this is sitting around the zero mark. Okay, so it requires less boost of that signal. Okay, so we've gone and processed that. So now we're going to cut it at... We'll just cut it where that blip is. And 
Noting that it's only going to take the first 54.6 seconds, we're just going to cut it at the 101 mark like we did last time. And we'll analyze the plot spectrum. Yes, thank you very much. And I'm going to drag it over. We'll change that to a log frequency. And let's have a look. So frequency at this lower end pattern looks very very similar and this end is falling off quite steadily you can see it doesn't even hit 5000 hertz so the signal that we're getting here at the 4000 mark is where they're starting to get that boost in the microphone pickup so does it really matter it might not matter at all if you're getting some weird stuff that the microphone is doing at that frequency because the keyboard's not even producing sounds at that frequency and the bulk of it really is sitting around the thousand hertz sorry the 10,000 hertz mark um, and below I realize I've been talking the wrong scale it's 10,000 so this is the 40,000 hertz uh, is that right <laughs> yeah 40,000 hertz so maybe I, should, I need to go and have a look at that um, Uh, chart yeah sorry so at the 10,000 20,000 Hertz Wow okay so my my numbers and my maths are completely off in regards to the the graph that is being produced because 10,000 is there 20,000 is there so all of this actually between the 10 and 20 is we're still hearing that and interestingly enough, I don't know why the uh, frequency response doesn't go higher than that. I mean, surely it must do something since the microphone's picking it up, but it's probably outside the range of normal hearing that they care about. So, yeah, all right, so a little bit of, of this gap here is actually being boosted. Uh, around there there's that little peak boost and then this is falling off just like the microphone is indicating on its frequency response so if you play them side by side of the last video in the series and this video it'll give you a rough idea about potentially how it sounds difference but you do need to note that there is a difference of height in that because this is sitting uh, about almost double the distance that the ribbon microphone was sitting at uh, so it might be different in how it picks up those higher frequencies because there might be energy loss in the air in between which I don't know I don't know okay that's it for this one once again, I'm going to save the data. Uh, it does actually export it into a text file, which is really great because I'll be able to chuck it into Excel and plot all the lines on top of each other at the frequency and response. And then we can actually have a straight up comparison on what they look like. And then, of course, we'll have the sound files that we can also play back one after another straight away so we can actually see what we can hear, what that looks like too. Uh, I need to go and do the ribbon microphone again and we'll move on into the next microphone and the next microphone and the next microphone. All right, if you like this kind of stuff, want to see more, of course, please give me feedback, comments below. Hit that like button. Share this with other keyboard people who care a lot about their sound because this is the kind of stuff that they should think about and consider. And if you're not subscribed, would love and appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and bell notifications too. Find my mouse cursor, get it over the stop recording button, and of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.